Special maneuvers. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video. This is gonna be the last, or this is gonna be second to last breakdown of the whole uh, breakdown that they uh, dropped like last week. If you're watching this video, it is six days away until Sparking Zero. Can we get some Sparking Zero hype in the comments? Let's go and get it. Let's go ahead and get some more information. Let's get it. In Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, you can perform special or several maneuvers that do not fall under the combo category or the blast category. These gameplay features are numerous and range from transformation to QT sequences or quick time events. Sorry, I, 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 I molded over, but you get it. <laughs> Quick time event sequences. Let's have a look at them and how they bring spotlight on characters during the fight. Transformation. Select the desired transformation and press up to display transformation panel. Then select square or X or triangle or Y or X or A or circle or B to perform it during the fight while using skill counts. Once performed, the statistics of the character will improve. So when you transform to these characters, they're gonna have a big stat boost. We already we already already knew that. So that's 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 the information there. Fusion can only be used when the two characters who can fuse are in your team. Fuse into the characters shown on the fusion panel by pressing up plus L1 or R1 to switch the transformation panel to, to the fusion panel. Then select with square X or triangle or Y or X or A or circle or B. Once fused, both characters will disappear from your team member screen and be replaced by a single fused character. Note that they cannot go back to normal. So you can actually not revert back to your regular self once you fuse. Nice little tidbit, glad you got the info. If this part helped you, let me know in the comments. The switch. The switch is possible once the change icon is lightened. Press left to display the switch panel, then choose the character you want to switch with X, triangle, Y, X, you get it. This mechanic can lead to other gameplay features such as, this is actually clarifying something that I wanted to know. Was well, there gonna be any type of animation or any type of way you can actually attack while you're, you're switching your team? So this one is con uh, confirmed to have something what's known as a chase change. So in team battle, which while attacking to let your switch in character continue the assault, use this tactic to smoothly switch out team members while keeping up your attacks. That's pretty cool, that's pretty cool. I actually like that. Let me know down in the comments if you like this feature. Sparking mode, which is actually high tension mode, or you know, when they actually go uh, burst limit mode or whatever. To enter sparking mode, you must charge your key, ga key gauge to its maximum and even further. You will need to spend one skill count to reach sparking mode. Sparking mode not only enhances your abilities, but also offers a variety of other benefits, such as allowing you to shoot key blasts without consuming key. Use moves such as Violent Rush while in Sparking Mode, you can perform continuous rush attacks until your gauge runs out, resulting in an uninterrupted barrage of melee attacks. You can also perform Hyper Rush Smash, sorry, which will inevitably break the guards of your opponent or super movement at it as it consumes some of your Sparking Gauge and allows you to vanish and move instantly. So sparking mode is gonna be crucial. You you let somebody get into sparking mode, and everybody knows this, this has been a, again a thing in, in Tenkaichi series for a long time. If you let somebody get into that mode, you're you're almost cooked. Not always, not all the time, but you're almost always cooked. All right, I said this was gonna be the last one. Now we're gonna go ahead and add this one to the last one. So this is actually gonna be the last one for the actual breakdown. The quick time event or QTE. Once certain moves are performed at the same time by both. Players, a dynamic quick time event happens. Quick time events will make your fights even more unique and unpredictable as they require a shift in the way the battle flows. Make sure to include in your battle strategy by making it, making it a turning point in battles to throw your enemy's rhythm off. Speed impact. A speed impact sees the two fighters clash and trade a series of blows. Perform a speed impact by clashing with your opponent using a dragon dash, which is R2 or RT, uh, Xbox and um, PlayStation, and plus X or A, Xbox PlayStation. This also occurs when a rush type blast collides with a dragon dash. This impact action is divided into two main parts. First, during the single strike, both sides must match their inputs with what is being shown on the screen. Once the winner of the single attack is decided, the action proceeds to rapid strikes. During rapid strike, the final damage inflicted is decided by the number of inputs performed by each player. Once the rapid strike stage ends, the winner of the strike, the winner of the single strike will send the loser flying, concluding the encounter. So this is gonna be really cool again. Guys, this is gonna be really shake up the way we play the game. Again, we had these things before, but it's the way that they're doing it and incorporating it and trying to revamp it 
to make it newer, to make it more immersive. That's the key here, making it more immersive, making it feel like you're in the anime. Power impact. Power impact happens once the two characters perform a throw, R1 and RB, X plus X or square at the same time. This impact action is centered around comparing strength by holding corresponding buttons. During the clash, a gauge will be displayed. You must adjust your inputs in order to not exceed the needle. The winner is determined by whose gauge is closest to the needle when the power impact ends. So it's not it's not more so about yeah it's not yeah it's, it's more so yeah it, so again it's it's the same thing but just kind of revamped. Is there is nothing new about this? If you play the older Tenkaichi games, you know this. You know how this works. There, so uh so it's not going to be about just clashing and just tapping the button or tapping it fast. You have to actually time it and actually time it against your opponent and see whoever wins that power impact. So it's pretty neat. Then we have the crash impact. Crash impact is triggered when both characters using the step uh, X or A at the same time. Once the crash impact happens, the two sides will randomly assign the roles of attacker and defender. The inputs shown for the attacker and defender are different so the players must follow the directions on the screen. If the attacker wins the exchange, the defender will take damage. If the defender wins, they will protect themselves. A maximum three exchanges will take place the player to two exchanges will knock back the other player. So again, this is uh, again reminiscent of even Raging Blast 2, except theirs was more like you teleported. It's just that you had to hit one faster. You had to hit the button faster. This one, you actually have different inputs for each character. Blast Impact. Blast Impact is an impact action that occurs upon the collision of two ranged blast attacks. When a blast impact begins, a meter a meter will be displayed on screen and gauge on the right side will be will begin increasing. Pressing will convert the gauge into energy for your blast, affecting whose blast comes out on top. In addition to single button presses, you can increase your power through rapidly tapping the button as well. The winner will deal tremendous damage to its opponents. That is that is insane. Again, these blast impacts, I know there was some stuff about like how they look on screen and everything. I want to know if you guys saw the final builds or anything, how you think it looks in its final stages. I have no problem with the uh, impact. I don't know. The screen does look a little dizzy, but other than that, it doesn't really look that bad to me. I, I want to know what you guys think of that in the comments. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen, for the official fighter's guide. Everything you need to know about the combat, about the character types, about the look of the characters or how those accessories can be used in battle has all been completed. Leave a like and subscribe if you're new if you're ready for Sparky Zero. By the time this drops, we have six days away, whatever day it is, six, five. We, we, we are so close to release, it's not even funny, ladies and gentlemen. Monday is going to be here for the Ultimate End Deluxe Edition. I will be streaming Monday night at 5.30 p.m. 5.30 p.m. on launch. It launches at 6 p.m. Eastern for those who are on the East Coast. Make sure you guys are following me because I will also be streaming all this week as well. At 5.30, same time. But we're going to be about 30 or 45 minutes. Won't be too long. But yeah, that's enough of my ranting, man. That's enough of the breakdown. That's enough of everything. If you're ready for Sparky Zero, can I get a Sparky Zero hype in the comments? Let's, let's get it. Uh-huh. Yeah, we ready, man. We ready. I'm ready. You ready? Let's get it. Type you ready in the comments if you're ready. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.